So, yeah, this is going to be campaign two, first episode. Uh, we're running a little behind tonight just because we're having technical difficulties and stuff happened. So don't go anywhere. Uh, we're going to get our whole spiels out of the way first. Yeah. Jo- Josh isn't even in front of anyone. <laughs> so that's cool. Um, first thing I want to do is I want to shout out our Instagram and our YouTube pages, The Junk Drawer Show. Um, make sure to like and subscribe there. Do that. Uh, I also want to shout out Mike Spillane. He's been killing it the last week, uh, and I want to give him absolute full credit because Josh and I both hate social media, and we're not about to do anything with it. (laughs) And Mike has been destroying our social media page, so if you don't like it, please go on Instagram and do that right now. Um, I'd also like to shout out to the Yar King. Uh, He commented on our last video of uh curse of strahd and he was uh very sweet in what he said and he said that we told a good story and he really liked the characters and following along and i just wanted to shout him out and thank him for commenting and uh and making us feel really good about what we did so the yar king on youtube thank you so much if you're watching if you're not cool but also still thank you so uh, that's all I got. What do you guys? Anybody else got anything? Um, um, how's my audio? It's hearable. No, I'm testing on the stream. <laughs> Great. Cool. I sound good. Dope. I'm gonna mute that. Well, Ish. since they've uh, they've let me shout out on their channel, I'm just gonna give a shout out to uh, Random Encounter Productions. Um, you can find them on Twitch, YouTube, all that jazz. Uh, Random Encounter Prod, P R O D. Um, they're also a D&D stream. Um, they've been giving me a lot of um, advice, and I also play along with them. This is my main campaign, and then I just go with them every once in a while. But I want to give them a shout-out since they let me shout out Junk Drawer like, for the past two months. So Yeah, go check out Random Encounters. Do yeah. it. Yeah, for sure. They, they stream, I think, every night during the weekday. Um, I normally go on Wednesdays. I will not be going this Wednesday because i got to work, but... Check them out. They're fun. They're cool. They're about to finish their campaign. It's also a homebrew, so uh, it's literally in their end game of that. So that's it. That's all I got. Cool. And I'm gonna give a quick shout out to God. Uh, hey, GG. Oh, what's up? Goodness. I'm gonna give a quick shout out to Satan. Uh, what's up? Lust down. That's a <laughs> reference from the last campaign. Can we? <laughs> yeah. Can we go? Oh, you can be viewed on YouTube. That, yeah. <laughs> Um, oh, also, we're gonna be—we're uh, not gonna be in the chat anymore because uh, we're gonna be focused on this. So we love you guys, uh, and we'll uh, talk soon. Yeah. Hopefully, yeah. we'll have someone in chat in the next couple of weeks to be able to keep you guys entertained. Um, oh, also, we have someone in the chat, uh, Will, who is uh, a friend of mine and knows Mike sometimes, and they have a Viserian dream, which I think streams on Sundays. If not, check out their Twitch page and check them out. Because they're really cool, and I want to end up jumping in with them at some point. But check that out for sure. Will, if I butchered that name, I'm super sorry. Oh. Oh, um, so I this is my first foray into homebrew, uh, and it's been like six months since we've uh, since I've been at the helm, back at the helm. It feels good, feels right. Uh, so I may be a little rusty, but, uh, I'm sure I'll find my stride and we'll all find our stride. Uh, very, very excited and a little nervous, but it's going to be, it's going to be awesome. So, um, yeah. Any, any other, any other comments before we dive in? Let's rock. We lost Josh. Josh isn't here. <laughs> <clears throat> he, he was, yeah. he couldn't take it. He couldn't take the heat. He got out of the kitchen. There's a kitchen. Now there is. <laughs> Now there is. On my ship, there is. Speaking of ships, we're going to start where every good story of D&D starts on a ship. Um, So we're going to follow our old friend from back in Curse of Straw days, Thok. Thok, uh, it is midday, or not midday, it's uh, dawn. The, uh, the morning is uh, starting to come. The twin suns starting to peak over the crest of the horizon. As 
you wake up in another cold sweat from your very normal reoccurring nightmares. And you hear the creaking of the ship as you cross the, uh, the teal depth, the ocean front that you are currently on, uh, heading toward the continent of Astrahi. All is calm, all is quiet. You hear the waves crashing against the ship. And as you slowly rise, you go out into the horizon and uh, to a familiar sight that you see, which is usually you wake up at dawn and you greet every new day, each new adventure that's slowly coming. You lean onto the bow of the ship and you feel the salts air sticking to your skin. It's been a few months since you've ported. You've been able to go to different supply areas, different kind of ships able to uh, trade and barter with you. But this is truly the first time in a very long time that your feet will be on solid ground. And slowly, but almost surely, you, uh, as you lean forward, your blue-haired mate, Tsunami, the Triton, leans forward next to you and looks out into the horizon with you. Her green hair is this, uh, this curly kind of, uh, it looks like almost like the ocean in the Emerald Deep. Her skin is this, uh, this teal color that when the light hits it just right, it kind of glitters like a stone. And she's fixated on the ever-cresting horizon. <sighs> Bad dream again? Yeah. They seem to be uh, happening more often. Yeah, I can tell. Usually I can hear you snoring through the floorboards. <laughs> Sorry. It's fine. I figured that, I don't know, after a few months, these things would go away. Yeah, you and me both. Like, it started a long time, like, a few years ago. It was only, like, once in a while. Then it became, like, more frequent, more frequent. And now it's... It's happening too frequently, and I don't know what it means. But you know what it means? It means we need to get off this fucking boat for at least <laughs> a few days, a few hours, maybe a bar, something. I hear, I hear the place we're going to. They have a theater. You want to go to the theater? Listen, I, I can, I can appreciate art and music, and it's. Listen, I can punch. I can throw a punch like a motherfucker, but no, I know you can. And <sighs> you also come from water, which surprises me that you want to leave water and go on land. It's not. It's the same thing, over and over. There's a reason why I'm on this ship and not in the depths of the ocean. True. Right? I mean, we're almost there. Yeah, a few hours. Yeah. So uh, I'm definitely going on shore leave. Uh, I think uh, Tiburon is as well. Uh, I don't know about the others, but I'm getting off this. I'm getting off the ship. No, like for sure. I mean, get off the ship. Keep an eye on him. He tends to get himself into trouble. Yeah, no. Often. I remember the last part, and uh, he picked a fight, exactly. and he started a mob. It was great. I had to clean that up. Exactly. So how about we not start a mob this time and try not to draw attention? Okay. As your first mate, I comply. Try to get situated. We dock in a few hours, and she kind of pats you on the shoulder and lets you have your moment out in the sea. Sue. And Thank she, you. she stops and kind of looks over her shoulder. She acknowledges. Try not to get into trouble. I don't need to babysit two of you. I never get into trouble. And there's there's a uh, a beat, and uh, soon she's off the ship. And the sun rises, and you close your eyes and you focus on Pelor, and you feel the heat of the sun, the sun's crest over your face as it's soon morn. A few hours pass. There's bustle around the ship. <clears throat> The different people that you've been transporting and the uh, the part-time crew members, they seem excited. You know, there's buzz that, oh, we're going to dock. And what do you think will happen? Or do you, do you think if we get to the bar that there's going to be, like, 
awesome stories that we've heard about. We have a few awesome stories of self. There's like, there's a buzz. There's a, there's an energy that's been lacking in the past couple of weeks, uh, being so close to, so in the middle of nowhere. Um, a few hours pass and slowly, uh, you dock into this massive, uh, coastal town, uh, into the port of Flamingo Bay. Um, with Flamingo Bay, it's a lot of rich, uh, the minute you get there, there are a lot of palm trees and there's so much green, but it's not that sickly dull forest green. It's these bright, vibrant greens, these yellows and these oranges of different flowers and pom poms that are growing out of the vegetation that's around this, uh, mouth, uh, the cliffside mouth of this, uh, port. Um, and you slowly dock and the, the dockman get your papers and you have run into this before where you're usually and you and your crew are usually the most noticeable on the dock says a bunch of different humans take note of you as you slowly dock your ship. <clears throat> as you start to get to the uh, end of the bow, your uh, uh, quartermaster, Hansa, looks at you. She's this uh, fairly tan female, uh, brown hair kind of pulled back in a, in a tight ponytail. She's no more than about, I would say, early 30s. And her arms are crossed and she goes, uh, should uh, we be expecting you later tonight, Captain? Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm going to... I'm going to get off the ship for a while as well. I'm going to look around town, have a couple things to look for. We need supplies. We need so. supplies and we need better hands. I mean, the last battle we had, I don't think the carpenter is going to be able to fix all the damage inside the boat. Mm. Maybe, um, do you mind looking around for anybody who would be willing to help out for a while? I can do my best. Um, I can... Talk to Raymair, see if he can be the next chain. Uh, since the three of you are going on an excursion, I figured I'd stay back and behind till we maybe move in shifts. Okay. Yeah, just don't have Macron in charge of anything. I don't uh, want him blowing something up by accident. He would blow up every single boat on this dock. Exactly. That's why I don't want him in charge. Yes. Uh, it's, he definitely will not be over my dead body, which, if he had his way, he would surely see. <sighs> Have fun. Um, be safe, and uh, see you soon, Captain. See you soon. So, you uh, talk off the boat, and Tiburon and Tsunami are next to you, and Tiburon kind of <clears throat> walks side by side. Uh, I think I'm going to check out the bar. I think uh, really could use a drink. Meet you there. I'll meet you there. In the meantime, she's in charge. Uh, and you're going to point it, Sue? Yeah. And Tibron's like, maybe uh, I could, you know, be given a little bit of extra responsibility. I think uh, I've proven myself enough to be well in charge, and I can definitely handle myself. Uh, and oh, I have no doubt whatsoever that you can handle yourself. You handled yourself pretty well last time that we docked. And Tsunami goes, huh, I don't trust you. You're on me. You're going to be like my child. I'm going to have to get like one of those kid leashes and put it around your neck. And Tibron's like, okay, fine. We'll meet you at the bar. Meet you there. So <clears throat> this is a uh, uh, port town. So there are a lot of trades. There's a lot of different markets. And uh, there are... It's a little bit more of an artsy town as well, as you see that there are different kind of kiosks as far as like books and uh, different bulletins in the uh, in the news. And uh, you see uh, there are flyers around for the, the play that's uh, coming about. And um, you see these different kind of fruit stands. And once again, as you as you move through this town, you kind of see that everyone's kind of keeping a, a, a nice wide berth from you. As, you know, you're this big hulking orc, presumably, as you're, you know, admiring the different kind of arts and crafts that people have made, like different wind chimes and different vases. Anything in particular you're looking for? 
just kind of perusing town. If anything particular, I would look for flowers. Since I told Sue I would look for some okay. at some point. So I'm just keeping an eye out. And if I can't find any, I would just find any of the local like foliage that mm-hmm. wouldn't be missed. <clears throat> just pick okay. up some random flowers along the way. Okay. Um, so as you do so, you eventually go up to this cart. Um, where this this young woman uh, is kind of like her eyes kind of light up. You see like people go back and forth, but she has different kinds of like flower crowns and different bouquets of these kind of wild flowers that uh, permeate and grow here. Um, <clears throat> and she's this kind of older woman. She seems to be in her mid sixties. You know, crow's feet. This uh, tan complexion that you could assume is from the region of being so close to the suns and um, you see her and she goes, oh, hello, dearie. Uh, my name is Irma. This is my flower shop. Um, are you looking for anything in particular? Or are you going to perhaps try to kick the kiosk here? No, no. Any, anything in particular that's not green or blue would be great. Green or not green? Not or green or blue. I have a particular friend who is looking forward to receiving some flowers that she is tired of those two colors, so certainly I think I think I might be able to to have something for that. And you see Irma and she kind of turns around and some time passes and as you kind of like are perusing her, like looking around her kiosk and you're kind of leaning on the uh, the the table, you kind of feel a very tiny, soft hand kind of tug at your bracer. Um and as you as you look down, you see this very tiny um, half orc girl. She's probably no more than five or six. She has these kind of bright uh, yellow eyes, and you see her tusks are barely growing, and her hair has been kind of French braided uh, into this very neat uh, tight braid. And she wears this very nice kind of like white gown that has this very simple pattern on it. Mm-hmm. And she kind of looks at you, and she looks kind of embarrassed. Um, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Yeah, and I l- kneel down to kind of be more eye level to her. And uh, it's it takes quite a lot and a lot of crouching. He's still uh, towering over her as you're kneeled and crouched. And uh, she looks over at you and she goes, I don't see get to see a lot of um, people that look like me here. Are you visiting? Yeah, of course. I'm, I'm a sailor. I... Oh, is is that why you have all of all of these? And she kind of uh, admires uh, your your tattoos. And I think this would be actually a good opportunity for you to describe for our our viewers. Fuck. Okay. Um. So Fuck is a uh, he's six foot ten, uh, green skin. He has stronger features. For a half orc, but not as strong as a full orc. He's more three quarters orc, uh, one quarter human. Um, he has black hair with a gold strip right here in the middle. Um, he wears full plate armor with the insignia of Pelor in the center. Um, has a mace um, strapped to his back along with a shield. He has ta- uh, glowing yellow tattoos. They don't glow as much, but he has yellow tattoos um, around his on his arms um, of uh, different animals uh, for the people that were close to him and gave him a new life in uh, seven years ago in Barovia. Um, so he has a tattoo of a boar on his shoulder for Absidy. Um, you can't see, but like on his chest, he has a owl for dirt since he was so wise. He has a raven on his other chest for <coughs> Rufio, and he has a wolf on his forearm for Sharp. Um, and there's many other tattoos that he has on him. He has also plenty of room to add more. Um, but yeah, uh, he has very long tusks um and yellow eyes and that's thought and that's thought so uh, yeah he's pretty big <laughs> he's like a good what what i say he was like three um i think he was like 350 with armor yes he's a very heavy boy he's a big beefy. boy beefy um so as you crouch at this towering mass and there is a 
outsiders would see this kind of gentleness that and this kind of grace that comes from Fock as you start pointing out like oh this was from my adventure back in uh, Barovia and this is of my adventure of the first time that I had perished in battle and this one is for and as you kind of go through she kind of traces the uh, the symbols around and she goes are you a pirate oh what would you, made you think that well my mom says that pirates usually have a lot of tattoos and um they're they usually carry weapons and they're a lot different than the soldiers and my mom says that some pirates are good and some are bad and i think you're good I, I, you look like me yeah i'm good and your mom is a wise woman don't ever judge a book by its cover it's what's in here that counts and i tap her in the chest you tap and she kind of my name's Nalra. Um, it, it's it's really nice to meet you. Um, if if you wanted to maybe come for for dinner later, um, how if you're here for a while, my mom makes a, a really good um, um, chicken, and I, I don't we don't we don't we don't get a lot of people that look like us that are nice. Well, th- thank you, Nalra, for the offer. Um, sure. I can swim by. Uh, do you mind if I bring a couple friends? No, no. That that would be that would be most that would be good. And you see, kind of this kind of like brightness. Um, I'll meet I'll meet you back here. Okay. Okay. Are you sure your parents are okay with this? I, I'm sure my mom will be fine when I tell her. <laughs> okay. Okay. If it's not okay. Like. And you promise you'll be back here. I'll do my best. Okay. Okay. And you see her, and she goes, bye, Thok. And bye. And does she have anything like a ribbon or like anything that like stands out to me? Like, um, I wouldn't say she has anything that's like flashy or, or bright or colorful on her. I would, I'll, I'll find a stone on the ground and give it to her. Okay. And, ca- and just for fun, I'm just going to cast light on the <gasps> stone and hand it to her. I'm like, I'll see you later. And then and her eyes just walk light away. Up, like, stone uh you kind of turn back around and you see um irma and she's kind of fashioned this uh bouquet of pinks and and reds and oranges these very uh warm colors to kind of greet you to the um to the uh island and she goes um that would be well for the ribbon and for the wrapping uh that would be about uh 15 copper um, and, uh, I know it's, it's a little steep, but, uh, they do only grow in this region. Um, and I, I do, uh, appreciate your patronage. Uh, I'm rambling. I'm rambling. So, sorry. No, uh, it's okay. And I, I hand over 20. Thank you. Oh, oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, please make sure to come again soon. And, uh, maybe if you give me some, uh, uh, ideas or you give me a little bit of notice before you come here maybe we can adorn the bow of your ship before you leave i'll think about it and she she kind of smiles um you you slowly and you have this kind of bundle of flowers uh you look at the other kiosks and uh can you do me a favor and roll a perception check for me Ooh, first roll first roll that's First roll of the campaign. Woo! Oh, that's I see the future, y'all. Oh no. Yeah. Uh, twenty-seven. Oh boy. Okay. You beat a twenty-two. Um. So as you're kind kind of walking and you're seeing the chaos of this port of people going in and out and uh, walking in front of you, you s- start to pick up on this very tap like light tapping of feet as uh, this person walks. And when you stop, they stop. And as you continue to walk, you, uh, you slowly hear this pattering of, of foot of feet. Can I discern how far away they are? Um, do an investigation. Ooh, that's not so good. Oh, that's definitely not so good. (laughs) Um, investigation. Ooh, minus one. Cool. Uh, two. 
Two. Two. <laughs> um, they yeah. could either be very close or they can be a few feet behind you. You're not entirely sure, uh, especially with all the, the noise and the bustle of the town. Okay. Um, oh, I don't want to walk with my mace in hand. Um, I'll, I'll be on guard, but I'm still just going to – I'm not going to turn around and slowly okay. keep walking forward. Okay. As you but slowly... I'm going to be attentive. Okay. As you're being attentive and looking, you see different kind of kiosks and you see different buildings and alleyways. And uh, you kind of hear the, the footprints or the uh, footsteps stop for a brief moment as you keep walking. And slowly but surely, they, they continue as well. Um, <clears throat> trying to keep whomever's distance. Are you stopping anywhere else? Um, nope. I'm going to start heading towards the pub. Is that what they said they were going? Yeah, they were going to go to the tavern. I'm going to start heading towards that tavern. Um, but I'm going to, I'm not going to go as fast. And I'm actually going to cast sending. Okay. And message Sue. Okay. What are you going to say to Sue? I'm going to say, I'm on my way to you. Don't be alarmed, but I think I'm being followed. Just okay. giving you a heads up. Okay. Uh, a few moments pass, and you kind of hear in your head, yeah, um, we're, it's called the Defeated Barrel. Just be on your guard. Tib runs in one of his moods now. Great. All right, so, and I'll, I'll just be on my guard. So as you're on your guard, you kind of see this massive tavern, uh, the defeated barrel. It's actually in the shape of a barrel that's been kind of crashed and split at the top. Uh, and as you go in, you see different patrons and uh, different barmaids with uh, uh, fists full of mugs uh, with frothy uh, amber colored beer. And you see kind of at the far end, you see uh, Sue and Tibran. And Tibran has, you see at least like two or three different very empty uh, mugs as he's kind of holding his head and Sue makes eye contact with you and you kind of just see her arms go up. <sighs> Whatever, it's fine. So you you start to make your way to the table uh, <clears throat> and you still hear that, um, that walking. And uh, as you get seated with them, you kind of sit with your back to whomever was following you uh, and you hear obviously the, uh, the footsteps stopping. I, where am I sitting? Am I in front of either Sue or I would say you're in front of Sue and Tibron's like, captain, you have made it to the, a broken barrel. That's not what it's called. It's called the defeated barrel. <laughs> It's undefeatedly broken. Good. I'm glad you uh, you're enjoying yourself. I'm uh, enjoying myself so much. My head is buzzing in a good way, kind of like when you get punched in the face, but then it doesn't hurt here. Like, look, and it just starts like you can stop hitting yourself. Stop hitting Bye. yourself. Stop hitting yourself. Uh, and he's like, I. I'm going to get another drink. Perhaps the lady would like one as well. And uh, Sue's like, please stop this. I can't stop him when he's in one of his moods. And you see him and he just kind of chasses away as he kind of very flowy with his arms as um, he's this uh, Gensai. You see the different, almost clear kind of skin and coat with his green hair. Uh, Different fe facial features from uh, a Triton, where Tritons are more angular. You see a more roundness to his face. And uh, this young Gensai's like, uh, bar. And you see him kind of stumble his way over to the bar. And Sue kind of leans forward and she goes, I think I had the guy that was following you. Where's he at? He's... <sighs> He's a few tables behind. You can't really miss him. He sticks out like a sore thumb. No one else is wearing a black sheet here. A black sheet. That's real conspicuous. 
Uh, <laughs> so you kind of like peek over your shoulder and you see this, uh, this figure, this man. He's in kind of these tight uh, cloth robes that are uh, adorned. Uh, they're black, but with a with closer inspection, you see this fine beading that goes along with it. He has this dark olive complexion, this kind of uh, curly, long, uh, wild beard, these bushy eyebrows. You see that several of his ears are pierced. And uh, as you, I need you to investigate him for a moment. Oh God, let's try this day. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Nine. Ugh. I'll give it to you at advantage because you're familiar with the object. Better, 14. 14. And you see dangling from one of his ears uh, a golden onk. Very tiny sliver of onk. With these kind of golden eyes as he's just, he is bearing into your soul right now. Uh, he does have a head wrap as well. Uh, that kind of keeps the this black uh, onyx hair in place. Uh, you could just see pieces of it poking out. You see that he's very sweaty. Obviously, being on a tropical island in black is not the most cool outfit. Yeah. Um, I tap Stu, and I'm like, keep an eye on me. I'll be right back. Let's see what he wants. You're going to talk I, to the crazy person. I'm going to talk to the crazy person. Maybe we shouldn't talk to the... <sighs> Fuck. I mean, okay. Who, okay, right now, look around the bar. Who seems the craziest one right now? I don't know. Ooh. The three multicolored people? Probably the Ganassi over there that's drinking his ass off and making a fool of himself. So, do you and think the quiet person in the corner is really going to do much? And worst case scenario, I have you. I'll be fine. Yeah. Okay. Cool. And you see her, and she kind of, like, crosses her arms as you... Oh, before I forget, here are your flowers. And you see this kind of, like, smirk that slowly gets muffled, and she looks up at you, and she goes, fuck you. <laughs> fuck you, too. <laughs> and I walk towards the guy. She kind of puts the, uh, the flowers up, and she smells. Um, is he sitting by himself? He is sitting by himself. He has this very... Uh, very calm demeanor about him as he he eyes you um and you there's a ta there's a seat across from him at the table as you slowly pull it out and oh i'm gonna over. flip that i'm gonna flip the chair around and kind of sit on it backwards and lean against the uh the back you're gonna of have a rap sesh with him yeah i'm like why are you following me i i feel like that would have been obvious garage you have huh. been uh, eluding us for a long time. How do you know that name? Hmm. I know many things about you, Garash. Tales I've heard in my head. I mean, you shouldn't always listen to everything that's in your head. So, we find ourselves in a predicament. It took me a, vi a while to, to look for you. But I knew eventually you would make your way to this port. And you knew this how? <laughs> Let's say we have ways of finding one another. I feel you and I, we are, we are destined to be connected. You have the wrong work. We are not connected. Hmm. And if there was a connection with what I think there was a connection with, that connection was severed a long time ago. You believe it to be severed. And he kind of like leans forward and as this tense kind of moment happens, you see this young kind of bar mate. She's like, can I, hi, um, can I get you anything? Without breaking eye contact with him, I'm just going <laughs> to say two ales and place one gold on the table. And he's going to not break eye contact. And he goes, and I think I'll have just, do you have any tea? That'd be quite lovely. She goes, I think we have this kind of uh, green tea. Yeah, yeah, I can, I can get you That'll tea. That'll do fine. But, okay. And she, she kind of leaves. <sighs> How long has it been, Garash? 
I don't know. You tell me. We're the ones that have the connection. Yes. Yes, we do. It has to be about, what, six, seven years now that you've turned your back on our Lord? I mean, turn your back is kind of a wrong choice of words. I mean, unfortunately, I <laughs> I did not have the fortune to be there when you di- disgraced our God. But well, as far as I knew, I was his only champion at the time. He wanted something that I couldn't provide, and I told him he can get it himself. If he wants the Raven Three Queens Florum, he can feel free to get it. Which very, very wise decision. You were the champion for Barovia. You see, there are much there are more of us. That's great. And you can feel free to be his champion, but I'm not coming back. Don't think you you understand. When you make a pact with death, death has a way of finding you again. I let him make this pact. It wasn't willing. He kind of forced me into it. Since there was no consent, guess what? I had every right to break it. I don't want there to be a problem. Garrosh, but I do have to take you in. (laughs) You can try. Here in the middle of the bar. If you want to make a scene. But we haven't had our tea yet. And you see him and he kind of leans back and you see his kind of knuckles. He's like cracking them. He has his hand on his saber. And he goes, no, no. You are full of hope and gusto, vigor. You, you, have the, you still have the, the uh, innocence of a naive young man and child. No. You stink of hopefulness, and unfortunately, you can't be like that when we get you back to him. I'm no. not going back. We all come back. And you see him and he kind of leans back and <clears throat> slowly gets up, puts a, a goal down. The tea is on me. Consider it a, uh, a last beverage for your trip. And I just stare. You stare as he gets up. And uh, he has his sword on his hilt and he gets to halfway to the... Uh, the bar, and you see that there's these burly kind of um, uh, captain of the guards, different kind of guardsmen, and uh, he kind of looks back out over you, and he goes, hey, fairly loudly, isn't that Captain Morningtooth, the pirate? Wow, weird. And this kind of catches the attention of the guards are like, there's a pirate, there, there's a pirate and they start getting up and you see this man and he just kind of gestures and you kind of see him slink into the shadows as this commotion starts to happen. I head over to Sue. I'm like, it's time what, to go. What the fuck, man? It's time to go. That's okay. We're running. Uh, I, I have to get Tibron. Uh, and you see her and she kind of gets up. She's like, okay, we're going. And Tibbon's like, I haven't finished my drinks yet. We're going. We're going. To say, okay, we're going. Um, and as you slowly start to, to move past, there's this about 6'6 six, six human. He's built like a brick shit house. Um, human man. And he has these kind of apologetic eyes almost. And... Uh, you see on his armband, he has different kind of ranks, and you can see that he's actually the guard captain. He has this square, angular kind of face, this buzz cut that you see different kind of markings and scars kind of etched in into the fade of his hair. Uh, and he kind of looks at you and he goes, Is it true? You're a pirate? No, sir. I'm a great citizen of the law. I abide every rule. And you can roll a deception check on that. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, that's great. Yeah, real charismatic, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Plus yeah. zero. Yeah, eight. And he kind of um, looks at you and he goes, listen, we don't want to cause a scene in the bar. Why don't we go, take, go for a walk and we'll, uh, we'll figure this out. Sorry, I, I haven't done anything wrong. If you're Captain Morningtooth, you've done a few things wrong. And we need Captain to figure that out. No, my, my last name is Vasir. Uh, you have the wrong man. Uh, you kind of fit the description, not to be orcish, but you're a little green. That's racial profiling right there. Tattoos. There's many orcs with tattoos. Golden streak in your hair. It's the birthmark. That giant mark of Pelor on your chest. Yeah, he's a great god and worships life, you know. Morning Tooth. Please. And if I choose not to come willingly? Then you become an enemy of the country and uh, we hunt you down. I glance, where's Sue? Sue and is Tiburon. behind you, and Tiburon's like, I'm going to light these fuckers up. And you see, like, his <laughs> his hands start to, like, crackle with this energy, but he's so blasted that you see, like, like at this point, it's just, like, they keep sparking up and then sparking out. And I look at him slightly enraged as a stop it. And you see him, and he's like... <sighs> and then... I look at Sue, take care of him and take him back to the ship. And what? just take him back to the ship. And uh, you see this man and he goes, thank you. Mm -hmm. My name is Leo. I'm the uh, guard captain around here. Um, I don't know so if you're familiar with our parts here. We, uh, we have a, uh, a guild. A guild hall. They uh, they probably have to figure out what to do with you. Oh, I thought you were going for a walk. That's where we're walking to. All right. Okay. And he kind of walks with you side by side as at least 20 different kind of guards eventually start pooling around you, kind of forming this this bubble. And you hear Tibron just yelling at Sue, like, I could have taken them. Like, we could have, that, you can't just let him go. And you hear Sue saying, you have to, he, he's the captain. He's going to let the orders, he's going to be fine. We're going to find him. He's, we, he'll be fine. We'll be fine before dinner. And as you go through kind of the port, they're not keeping you in shackles or chains. They haven't taken anything from you or stripped anything of you. Uh, and eventually you get to the um, the consortium of this this guild hall. It's this very massive uh, stone structure that's kind of the center point of this town. Um, and you kind of see um, outside this person just reading kind of like this paperback, excuse me, book, and uh, kind of perks up and he goes, oh, uh, Leo didn't, didn't expect uh, any, any visitors. Were people getting rambunctious in the, in the barrel again? And he goes, no, um, I think we got a uh, us a famous man on our hands. Figured we have to figure out what the uh, the guild wants to do with them. And he goes, uh, I mean, I can I can try to round them together if you wanna wanna fix a meeting. Uh, just one one moment. Um, and you see this kind of like young man kind of go into the into the town, and <clears throat> Leo kind of goes, um, this, is, this is it. This is the guild hall. Uh, kind of opens these wooden mahogany doors and inside is this massive kind of um room that stretches to the uh the farther than what is seen outside and you kind of seen these raised platforms of about five different chairs uh behind this kind of counter and um leo kind of looks at you and he goes um i heard what you did uh in a couple of different places and Definitely, I definitely think kindly and very highly of you. So then we're cool. We have no problem. You and if I. You've heard what I've done. You know that I don't do anything 
evil. I know that. I'm I'm one of five. But I think uh, I think we can get this over pretty quickly, and I think you can be on your ship before you know it. Maybe you pay a fine. How much of a fine? <laughs> That's a great question. I mean, I don't I don't see why I would have to pay a fine. You stole a lot of money. Stole a lot of stole coin. Stole is a very strong word. Sunk a lot of ships. More like return the money to where it should have been. Right. And but... those ships also were by horrible, corrupt people. So, if uh, anything, I'm doing the world a favor. I agree with that. But. So I can go. Vigilanteism isn't very highly regarded in this area. A lot of it wasn't in this area, though. It was out at sea. No, but uh, there were a few ships of ours, and of course we have our different naval fleets within the continent. I really don't want you. You seem like a really nice guy, Leo. (sighs) And I really don't want you to get hurt. So I'm not going to get hurt. I just, I prefer it if you don't threaten me. I'm just oh, trying. To... I'm not threatened. I just don't want you to get hurt. I'm looking out for your best interest. Just don't do anything stupid, please. Stupid is my middle name. And you kind of have these these guards around, and after a few like twenty minutes, thirty minutes, uh, these other council member, members kind of show and kind of come up um <clears throat> we have the uh about 41 year old human female she's about 4 11 uh she has this athletic build this kind of uh blonde hair that's graying at the tips of uh the skull um this kind of kind uh uh visage um kind of a she seems to have an unwavering calm energy and you see that she has this uh very tribal kind of tattoo of an elephant on her right hand uh and she has um in front of her a placard of her name which just says r blade walker and she's in these very simple garb uh slowly there's another one that uh goes in front of a plate that says serpent wind which is uh this kind of young uh human male he's about five seven another athletic kind of uh gentleman he has a um he has a uh, another kind of tribal tattoo that crawls from his shoulder to his his right hand he has this kind of like uh, goatee uh, like an errol flynn kind of uh, goatee and um he kind of sits and kind of murmurs with uh with blade walker then you see this very uh short woman uh she's a gnome she's about three two uh she kind of has this fiery red hair She's a little bit on the larger side. Um, she has calloused hands and uh, she wears these kind of simple overalls. Uh, and she kind of sits at her um, placard, which says all row. Uh, and then finally, where there is another placard that says Ruby Minor, you see this dwarf, uh, four six, very stocky, long braided Fu Manchu. He doesn't even have a chin on his uh, a beard chin. He just has the straight kind of uh, braided mustache, uh, black and onyx, except for these speckles of uh, red in his beard. And uh, he kind of just sits down, and finally Leo uh, sits at his place where it says Cartwright. And um, there's a kind of a lull. And as you sit there, uh, you kind of hear this very loud, like, like this kind of whirring as this very large, these two very large automatons of about eight feet tall next to each other that you can only see like little yellow beady eyes that kind of look outside of it. And they're just these massive kind of guards and they're outside of where the entrance is which is also in the front is just littered with about 20 of those guards and have i seen any of these like automatons before 
You uh, roll a history check to see if you've run into them. Natural 20. You uh, would assume that these are uh, shield guardians that are uh, these very large beings that almost are constructs. They're built for a purpose, and that purpose is to make sure that there's no funny business happening. Got it. So I know... I With a natural 20, I would probably know that I would not be able to take them strength-wise. Correct. Okay. <laughs> and right. you kind of see um, Blade... Uh, <clears throat> Excuse me, Blade Walker kind of lean forward and very even tone. She goes, Captain Thok, Morning Light. Um, this is a pleasure to have such a celebrity in our midst. I wouldn't consider myself a celebrity, but the pleasure is all mine. <laughs> and you kind of see this smirk across her face. I exaggerate I, a bow, by the way, very sarcastically. And you hear, um, you hear like two kind of like scoff, and you kind of see the gnome look very cross at you. Uh, and the uh, the dwarf kind of leans over and goes, "What did he say?" And Leo's like, uh, and Blade Walker goes, "It's a, uh, it's been." quite some time that um, we've had suspicion of a pirate in our very simple port. Um, of course, we've, we've had suspicions, but unfortunately, as Leo has debriefed me, that usually a challenge or some kind of verbal or proof uh, does alert our, our authorities and does have us have to step in. So, so you've been aware for quite some time that there's a pirate in your midst. Hmm. I just arrived today, so that can't be me. No, but you do fit the, the description. There are many orcs that look like me. I have seen many orcs in my lifetime, Captain. You are no mere orc. Well, that was worth a shot. So the question is, really, what to do with you? Well, I was told that I'd be back on my ship by dinner time, and I can be on my merry way and get out of your hands. Leo is very optimistic. And you see him, and he kind of... I thought the kid could get a fair shot. I figured we hear him out. He's done a lot of good for the region. And you kind of hear the gnome. That's... Bullshit. Vigilantism is nothing but a selfish act. We have laws for a reason. If really? Because your laws, laws, your laws, I haven't seen you do jack shit. You're just meeting me. Who the fuck are you to know who I am? And who the fuck are you to know who I am? Like, I I'm sorry, but are land. you out there? Are you actually out there? No, because I take care of my on? people. And, and I, I take, take care, care of your people as well. Okay, how do you take care of my people? Gee, by sinking other ships, the, destroying no, the, the things that, that I have provided. To have to them, whatever. And as you start, <laughs> as you start arguing, uh, Blade Walker goes, "That's enough. We're not here to place blame. We're not here to talk about the happenstances and the rumors. We have to talk about the facts. And unfortunately, this is there are a lot of." different maritime laws that you have broken in your seven years on ship. And there, there are quite a few of pirating, pillaging, stolen of property, destruction of government property, destruction of private property. There are a lot of people who are after your head suing and trying to get you in jail. There's a lot, there's a price that you have to pay for being a hero. It's What's not the like price? the days of old. If you need me to pay it, I'll pay it. And then I'll be on my merry way. I feel like the it's a little steep from the damages you've done. And uh, <clears throat> you, you hear the uh, 
the dwarf and he goes, is she going to tell him about the platinum? And Leo's like, oh, fucking just. And uh, what platinum? Rowan, the uh, the younger man. Well, from the different bills and states of what we've gotten over the course of your seven um, years of boating, you owe about uh, 500,000 platinum in damages. <laughs> Please. Uh, That's absurd. And you see like him and he just kind of like looks at the ledger and he's like, her. Now, Roseblade, our uh, Blade Walker kind of goes, obviously, this is a very, very heavy, heavy debt. And you are, of course, uh, given a more proper trial in front of a higher council than us. We're just the port. But we can't keep you here because. One, we have heard from Leo here that you have probably a very disgruntled crew that we've heard different stories about. We don't know which blue ones destroyed a couple of ships, but we know that there have been, and not including the dwarf that usually blows up different architecture and, and other things. I just chuckle under my breath. Captain, we do have to, to put you somewhere. And... You can put me on my ship. We can't do that. And I'm afraid you know that you know that as well. We have an obligation to the to the government and that we do this right. You're given a trial. You will be given a trial. Unfortunately, we don't know when that is because there are others in front of you, of course. But I have appointments that I have to make. There has to be, uh, I'm on a time limit. So how about I give you this 500 gold? We call it even. I leave your docks by nightfall. And you kind of see her and she goes, <sighs> Cleric, I have done a lot of adventuring in my day. Um, so you know that it's not always black and white. Sometimes you have to do the right thing no matter what the law is. Unfortunately, Captain, you are not above the law. You are not a god. You are not a demon. You are Thok. And Thok has to follow the rules. Even though the rules don't make sense. And you kind of see her. There are a few different places that uh, we can hold you. Um, but we believe that Stone Ward uh, is the best prison that would be for you. And how long will I be here for? There will be a wait. And uh, you see the dwarf, and he kind of leans over. Did you tell him about the 50 years? And Leo's like, fuck, shut the fuck up. <laughs> well, you do know that my people don't have a life expectancy that long. So you're pretty much sentencing me to death. I'm not doing that. And I'm going to do it in best of my power to make sure we get you a proper trial in a proper time. Well, if that's the case, I do still have the right to my one sending call. Of course. Um, we, uh, we leave in the... Nightfall. And she kind of like clasps her hands together and adjourned. And you kind of see the console slowly leave. And Leo kind of stands by and he goes, we'll work on this. We'll get, we'll get you your trial. I say nothing. Okay. And he kind of just nods. And uh, you're kind of still with all of these kind of guards, and you see the shield, the shield guardians as well. Under my breath, I'm like, I could have taken them. <laughs> um, so, uh, who do you want your your call to be? Oh, I'm calling Sue. Okay. So, <clears throat> the kind of 
few hours pass by and you're, you're kind of in this holding cell where at this point they have kind of put shackles on you to, to make sure you don't really try anything shifty. They have stripped you of your armor and have placed it very carefully and gingerly. Like they, they're doing this with a lot of respect that, you know, they see the symbol of hell and the symbol of the, the father of the son. And they, they put this down and they, they make sure that they, they take good care of your weapons and of what you have on you. And you see them kind of put it into a case and, um, there's kind of the stool and uh, Sue kind of sits across from you eventually and kind of sits down and uh, she goes, so uh, when are we busting you out of here? You'll know when you'll know. As of uh, now, they've, they have me pretty watchful eye on me. Yeah. Did you see those shield fuckers? I could have taken them. Okay. I, I don't know if you could have taken them. I could have taken them. But in the meantime, you're in charge. What? Take the ship off into sea. Don't uh, go too far. Just stay. Okay. Uh, where, where, where do you want me just to, like, what? Make fucking circles? Make fucking circles for a while until I send for you? Yes. Okay. Like, I'm and... not going to be there long. Okay. Not 50 years, at least. 50 years? Did they say you're going to be away for 50 years? <sighs> I don't want to be a captain. I'm not, I'm not built for being a I'm captain. I'm not asking you to be the captain. I'm just asking you to go out to sea just for a little while until I tell you to come back and just come and get me. Like, trust me, it won't be 50 years. If I come up with a plan, I'll send you a message and I'll tell you what's up. I swear to fucking God, if you die and you're in there for 50 years, I'm I will find someone. Die. You know how hard it is to you, me. And then I've I'll kill you twice. again. Yeah, yeah, and then yeah, you're going to yeah. die a fourth time. And what, you're going to bring me back to kill me a fifth? Yes, I will find a wizard. <laughs> okay. I've already met a few of those. One in particular that just drove me insane, but we're not going to talk about him. Oh, I'll find that one then. <laughs> Good luck. And she just, goes, just be careful. I feel this is the least dangerous route. If I comply, then who knows? It could be a week. Yeah. I ain't going to be here for long. We'll be fine. The kid's going to be a rock. Oh, no, I know. That's why, you, that's why we have you. That's why I have you. That's why I deal with him. Keep him out of trouble. I mean, there's only so much I can do with him. Like, you know him. He barely listens to what I say. But you have a, you have a very stern persona. He listens to you more than he listens to me. So you think after seven years, he would listen to me. But no. You would think after seven years, you wouldn't do something stupid. Me? Or him? Both. You I'm see not doing anything stupid. I'm trying not to kill these people. I appreciate that. Thanks. I just, I don't want to hear the boats blowing up in the middle of the ocean and then I have to get your ass. The boat's not going to blow up. Well, if anything, just hide the gunpowder. <sighs> you see her and she's kind of... I will see you in a few days. I'll see you in a few days. She Promise. I won't be there for long. I never am. Never are, Captain. And she kind of gets up. And uh, you have this very tiny kind of window in your cell. And uh, you see the nightfall start to, like, stretch out and go over. <laughs> go over and the, the moon kind of washes over you. And you kind of see Leo. And he looks over at you and he goes, this is, uh, this is Oz. He's the uh, one of the head guards at uh at Stonewall. He's gonna he's gonna take good care of you. And uh you kind of see this uh younger man, he's in about mid thirties, very lean, kind of gaunt build, uh this kind of shaved blonde hair, these brown eyes. Uh you don't really see a lot of weapons on him. You kind of just see um a few daggers on his side. You kind of see a pouch uh on his 
his boot and he's just kind of like playing like fidgeting with his uh deck of cards and he goes whoa uh, another orc uh exciting um so i'm sure they're gonna love you there uh okay do you have all your shit i don't know do i have all my shit uh you i mean you don't have any on you but all your stuff is yes packed and everything that you you had on you has been packed yeah it looks like i have everything on me okay so on our way to the very lovely stone ward prison you're gonna love it there are so many beautiful views of mountains and inside of a mountain uh you're gonna love to know what time it is all the fucking time you're gonna have a great time great a sailor being inside a mountain Sounds like a great time. See, now you're catching on. Um, and I will be having my lovely assistants uh, coming with us. And you kind of see the original shield guardians, and you actually see two more shield guardians. <laughs> this is not so necessary. Hey, if I'm taking in the famous Captain Morningtooth. Why I gotta... does everyone call me famous? I'm not that famous. And Leo kind of like moves in. It's actually morning light. And he's like, whatever the fuck. If I have a famous captain who's very shifty and he kind of clinks onto the box, worships a certain god, you probably have some tricks up your sleeve. I look up my sleeves. I you're, don't see you're kind of there. <laughs> you're mangled, manacled. So you're like, ching. And it's a very tiny range of movement where you're like, <laughs> No, nope. Yeah, nope. Uh, no tricks there. Well, please, allons-y. Let's go. Uh, so you're kind of escorted. There are two shield guardians in front of you, two in the back. Uh, to the side is Oz, and Leo's kind of like walking with you. And you see this kind of massive uh, naval ship. It's kind of uh, the wood is so dark it's almost onyx, and it has this. Uh, sigil of the stone ward facility uh that you will be very familiar with um <clears throat> and as the drawbridge kind of goes down it uh opens up the kind of port where you see this kind of holding cell uh there are a few other unsurlies and criminals inside and on the floor of the uh ship you actually see this glowing kind of rune that's this archaic kind of pale green fluorescent purple and light, bright light that's kind of pumping. And uh, Oz kind of looks at you and he goes, that's to make sure you don't slip out of your chains there with any kind of voodoo. We recently had an incursion the past couple of weeks. There was an incident and uh, yeah, we're getting a little bit more strict with the magic here. I figured it's not my first time seeing one. It won't be your last sunshine. And he kind of opens the gate uh, to one of the cells, one of the jail cells, and he kind of clips your your um, manacles onto one side of the ship. And uh, he goes, all right, well, uh, it's going to be a few weeks' journey. Get cozy. Um, if you want uh, to read you a story or, I don't know, get you a, a really nice fish or salmon, uh, I'll, I will do my best to accommodate you. I'm good. Thank and you. Though. You're welcome. And uh, Leo kind of goes, I'll write you. I'll let you know how it's going, okay? Okay. And with that, he kind of closes and you see the moonlight kind of at like a spear of light going through the jam, the jam of this door as it slowly turns from this wide array to this very slow slit as you see the seal around it as you see the last bit of light for a very long time. Um, so the, the few weeks on the boat are arduous. Are, are there going to be any daring attempts to escape that I should know about? I, mean, I think I would try to undo my manacles at some point if i've mm -hmm. seen them before or try i know i'm not proficient in log picks but i mean right i would try to finagle something i would try to pull myself out right. i would at some point try to break out but not to endanger anyone else okay so I, stealth, more stealthily than anything 
at about week two, you're kind of leaning back against the wall and you start trying to pull the chain off and you start hearing it whine a little bit. And the, uh, there's kind of a schedule of these shield guardians of how they move. And you kind of timed it at this point where you're able to like, kink, and you kind of get these, these manacles off. And sure enough, your timing is not quite white right yet. As another shield guardian kind of turns the corner, cocks its head and it kind of, and you see this, this kind of wave go out of magic energy. Oh, as uh, it casts the sleep spell. And oh, you're... Fuck. <laughs> so I need you to make a, um, what is it? It is a, I believe it's a constitution saving throw. Actually, you know what? It's more on me. I have to roll your hit points. So what are your hit points? 82. 82. And we'll see it's at a level much higher level. Yay. So <laughs> I could have taken them. <laughs> you start kind of <laughs> feeling drowsy as you're like <laughs> drool starts to set <laughs> as your knee kind of falls. And uh, you kind of see this shield guardian just kind of cock its head the other way as <laughs> your cheek kind of meshes with the the cold of the, the wooden floor. <laughs> as you're greeted by the buffs of sand in your head. So as we get into the, the mountain, uh, this is on the Estral rise, which is on a very far outreach in the middle of the uh, other side of the continent. At some point you're moved actually from the boat onto a convoy where you're there for another couple of days before going to this summit of this very large mountain the course of which being i would say you have about a month's worth of travel between God. the ship the convoy and going up the mountain and all this time no windows you have no idea where you are <clears throat> who's gonna kill me fuck uh so you kind of get to the the entrance of this mountain and there is a uh kind of this elevator makeshift shaft that you're all kind of hustled into and bustled into and oz kind of uh looks at you and he goes well uh i thought a lot about it over a course of our time together and you know what i like you thok i'm gonna keep you in my wing so i can keep an eye on you how's that sound oh that sounds peachy i mean like you're like my new best friend you should uh, add me on, you know, somewhere social where we can keep communicating with each other. Yeah, I mean, there's probably a bulletin board I can write your name on, and we can do, like, yeah, we'll do, like, tea or something. Just, we can send messages instantly. Yeah, sure enough. Why oh, not? no, no, no. Let's not do magic, though. Oh. And uh, as you have this kind of tit for tat, uh, you are kind of, you see your, your gear kind of being carted off onto another elevator. And he goes, yeah, uh, going to go over to the holding cells. That's where all uh, things that we have for the prisoners. And on, upon your release, you'll be promptly returned with them. So they're not going to go away or anything. Where are the holding cells? Oh, they're, uh, they're on another part of the prison. Oh, yeah? Where's that? Place where you're not going. I mean, I was just curious. Yeah. I'm yeah. just asking questions. No, I'm giving you answers. I mean, if you're confident with your ability to keep me in my place, then you should be confident to be able to tell me where my shit's going. And I'm not going to get there, right? Not without Jeez. you. I'm not a storybook villain. I'm not going to tell you the whole plan. <laughs> so after a few, about an hour of going down onto this elevator, you're all kind of ushered and you're stamped and processed. And eventually you go into a, uh, a holding cell with uh, another orc. He seems to be kind of tatted up, scarred. And uh, he says to you in orcish, you don't smell right. Why are you smelling everybody else? You don't <laughs> smell right either. I can smell you from here, heathen. And stop breathing. So, is this a full orc or a half orc? This is a full orc. Oh, good. <laughs> good. Um, 
So kind of after a tense minute, we will move on to, uh, because it is almost dinner time. So dinner is uh, newly prepared. Uh, the previous cook, after having uh, gone a little crazy with uh, the different knives and uh, cutlery in the kitchen, which have been promptly taken away, uh, there is a new cook in town. Uh, this is where we will go to Mike. Would you like to introduce your character as you were in the kitchen? All right. So, uh, Mike, real voice, uh, character. My name is uh, Alda Linden. Uh, Alda is a wood elf. Uh, he uh, right now is uh, dressed rather plainly because this prison is hell. Uh, he has very, uh, very tan, tan skin, uh, very tan skin. And then he's, uh, hair is very long, uh, probably got it in more of a ponytail right now, but it's a very like kind of platinum blonde, uh, fades into, uh, fades into like a green, um, due to all the time he used to spend outside. Um, (laughs) and, uh. He's very, very frustrated at his inability to do any kind of magic right now, because uh, all he wants to do is see a fucking tree. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> yeah, well, that's pr- that's basic. That's basic, very yeah. basic bones, Alder. So, Alder, you have been in the kitchen for the past month, and the food is awful. Uh, it's mostly been uh, a mash of uh, potatoes that have been imported and different kinds of roots, vegetables that you can assume grow in this area, in this region. Uh, usually it, the breakfast, lunch, and dinner is just this regular slop of just these gourded vegetables with no protein. Yeah. Anything that gets down to this point usually rots by the time it gets to you, which you're also super skeeved out by dead rotting carcasses. Um, you kind of go through the potatoes as you kind of go through your routine. You have this very uncomfortable neck, uh, collar that kind of glows this, emits this, uh, effervescent and fluorescent light that we saw earlier in the ship. As you start to pick apart the potatoes, you peel them, occasionally finding different kinds of fungi and spores on them from all the dampness and the dankness of the, the cave. And you kind of turn this into a ritual as eventually you get this giant pot and you hear one of the guards. He goes, uh, Alder, I think uh, you should make a little bit more than usual. I hear we're getting a new guest mate, another orc. Uh, well, uh, if you want to do me a favor here, um, you can go ahead and take off this piece of shit. And uh, I can make some real quality food for once because I can go ahead and just make it with magic. You know, cool. like... Good stuff, not rotten potatoes and carrots again. Come on, man. You know I can't do that. <sighs> you, you're killing me here. Uh, which guard am I talking to? Is uh, it uh, Ivan or? I will say you're talking to Ivan. Come on, Ivan. Like I, I know we can't have magic, and I know that last time there was a problem. I summoned Anaza, and you guys all got really, really fucking mad at me. It's, but all right, it's a huge fire thing. We're in a cave. What if you hit like an air pocket of like gas or something, and we blew up? Yeah. Okay, but you know, you you're speaking in what ifs here, Ivan. All right, what ifs are not it happened. All right, everyone's fine. The only people that got fucked up were some of the orcs that would be in dicks. All right. Besides the point. All I'm saying is I can make some quality food for once that's not rotten. I will if you just let me do a little bit of magic. I will talk to Oz about it. That's going to go well. I you know maybe he's going to warm up to you. He's been away for the past couple of months with this orc guy and the rest of his crew. That's all the, apparently we keep getting letters about is this this huge captain that's coming. Maybe he has yeah. I mean, maybe he'll lighten up his mood. He has a new project. Maybe, you know, he, he won't be so focused on you. Well, we can only hope. Uh, I appreciate it, Ivan. I guess um, I'll make doubles of the slop th- today. <laughs> and he goes, yeah, that's, that's probably a good idea. Uh, I'm going to go pros, 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 And he just kind of like sneaks kind of out. Um, 
and the rest of the preparation is the same. It's a lot of, you, you know, your, your ponytail starts like stranding out in different places. A sweat kind of goes around your brows. You have to go over to this pod and wait for it to boil. Uh, soon Doc, you are processed. And, uh, <clears throat> after your process and meeting all your other orc friends, including a very friendly, uh, lead orc named Kogan. Uh, he's this very brutish orc. He has these different tribal tattoos and he just has n- nothing to do with you. Doesn't make eye contact. They, they go like, there's another orc and no, no register. Is he like, I'm assuming he's bigger than me, obviously. Yes. Okay. And you kind of see like all these kind of like different kind of freshly new scars. And, uh, eventually Oz kind of comes out the separation of the prison is it's kind of this corridor where on each side of the corridor are what you would assume to be the orc prison. And then probably the other prisoners that are in there and you see Oz and he kind of has his hand on his belt and he goes, all right, ladies, it's chow time. And you hear the, the bars kind of creak open and you're all, all ushered into this room that, uh, you would expect there to be like trays or plates or bowls. And you see these very soft looking kind of mud pottery bowls that aren't completely kerns or kilns. Uh, and you don't see any kind of like silverware utensils. Um, <clears throat> You see at the kind of like far end, you see this other kind of group of more humanoid looking figures, uh, different from orcs. You see a very kind of frail, uh, gaunt man, very light skinned uh, with this fiery kind of red shaggy hair that kind of covers his eyes. And he's just kind of like holding his head like this as he waits for the slop. Uh, And uh, Pat, would you like to introduce your character? Uh, Yeah, I'm Donna. Uh... Uh, kind of slouch a little bit, um, sh- shrug the shoulders forward to, uh, mask the height and how big Donna actually is. He's, uh, when standing full height, he's about 6'6", <coughs> 250, uh, just solid human, uh, big, big fucking guy, uh, cellmates with the guy the super pale red-headed guy and uh is partially to blame for some of the scars on these orcish fellows and uh has kind of taken a liking to that skinny red-headed spit fuck and uh yeah he's he's very dirty doesn't look like he bathes consistently Hair's very matted and uh, kind of up, but you can't tell if it's just long or disgusting or just mud. He just doesn't really look like he bathes that often. So he's just dirty and he doesn't look as, as big as he portrays himself. Okay. Uh, and then slowly to the, to the right of uh, this gentleman is a very tall, uh, very animal Listic looking person. Uh, Josh, if you'd like to introduce your character. Yeah, uh, my name's Dremel. I'm a uh, 7 foot 11 inch furbolg, light blue skin. I weigh uh, 311 pounds. Uh, I got one ear, so furbolgs have pointy ears if you don't know. One of them's just like droopy all the time. Can't can't <laughs> lift it up, just it's his lucky it's his lucky ear. There's a pill for that. Not, I, I can't afford it. <laughs> it's expensive. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, light blue skin. He's got just a short haircut similar to uh, Pat over there. Uh, his beard is longer than mine, just long enough that he needs a little little metal ring to hold it together, which he does not have right now because the mm-hmm. guards took it. Uh, Correct. He is also in just that, that kind of uh, burlap sack. He's fine with that, though. <coughs> Dremel's from a, a mountain town, traveling mountain town, so possessions were never too uh how do i say fancy um uh, yeah i think those are the key points about who i am okay 
And Thok, as you kind of eye these people up, you see the door to the kitchen kind of swing open. And you see this uh, very handsome looking half elf who just his hair is all kind of disheveled. And he's holding this giant pot with this ladle. And um, Alder, you you enter the room. And uh, just clarification, mm-hmm. not a half elf, full elf. Mm. <clears throat> Sorry, full uh, elf. Uh, all right, guys. Well, tried to get something better, but um, we got slop. Come Woo! and get it. Yay! And more so, slop. R- bring your balls, and I'll uh, <laughs> pour it out for you. And you everyone, mean the mud. <clears throat> Just bring, bring the mud. Dude, come on, man. Like, you know, I don't want to do this either. <laughs> I'll grab my cellmates as well. And I'll kind of pat him on the shoulder and be like, I'll, I'll be back. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> Not like I can go anywhere. And Donner, you kind of get up and you're kind of slouching with these. You're kind of palming these bowls and your hands are just kind of overarching the lip of the bowls as you walk up to, to Alder, who begrudgingly, you start uh, putting the slop into, the, <laughs> into his bowl. And, and I, I, I look, give I, look. I give Donner like a, a, an extra an extra like half scoop just because uh, we've been through some stuff. So I'll look up at at uh, Alder that uh, fire, whatever that was, very impressive. Would have liked to have done more, but you know, now I can't do anything. So well, yeah. <laughs> those orcs will certainly remember us. And I'll kind of give him a nod and go back. And that that's more so where I give him the extra scoop before he goes. Okay. Uh, and this slow kind of like assembly line kind of forms and thought you don't really have a place in it. Like it seems like everyone has an order and you're kind of at the end of the line uh, next to this, uh, this verbal who's just kind of, you know, at the end of the line, just kind of, Taken in the scenery, even though it's a room and there's nothing in it, but he seems comfortable. Oh, so you're the new one. Yeah, sure. I mean, I haven't, one. Seen, I haven't seen you, you not, before. Do you not have new people swinging by often? Like, not like you. I mean, I look around. I'm like, there seems to be plenty of other orcs here. Yeah, but you're not giving me the death stare. <laughs> what, what kind of death stare is that? Like, kind of like the brow gets real angry, and they kind of ang- anger down like this. And I, I try to make a face, <laughs> and I give him a little punch on the shoulder. That's a nice try. You have got it. <laughs> Thank, thanks. I'm but, uh, I'm Dremel, by the way. I'm Fog. I won't be staying here long. Yeah, that's what I said too. It's been uh, it's been a couple months now. But hey, too blessed to be stressed, am I right? Looking around, it's not too bad here. There's no vision of the outside world. We're in a mountain. You sure about that? Well, to be fair, I'm from a mountain, so <laughs> this feels like home to me. Oh. But it's like, it's all in your mind's eye, man. Your mind doesn't have an eye. Oh, you've got a lot to learn. <laughs> how uh, how close <laughs> to the line? How close to the line are we? You're like halfway through the line. Uh, <laughs> I'm still just thinking about having an eye in my mind. You're like, what? what? And uh, very quietly, you hear at the beginning of the line. <sighs> um... <clears throat> Or no, you don't hear it at the beginning. You kind of hear at where the uh, the skinny red-headed gentleman. You just hear him huff very deeply as you hear as you finish your kind of spiel. Um, Although you kind of plop your uh, Dremel's food down, and this uh, new gentleman comes up after him. Um, were they the last ones in line? Yeah, they're the last ones. <clears throat> so. Uh... Seems like you're the new one, huh? Mm-hmm. That's what they tell me. 
Uh, Lundin, Alda, good to meet you. Fuck. That's you, uh... Place. Now, um... Just, like, taking a look up and down, can I mm-hmm. tell that he's, uh... Not quite a full orc? Um... Roll a nature check to see how well you know orcs. I mean, Mike knows orcs pretty well. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Mike does, yeah. Eleven? Uh, Eleven. All there doesn't. You, I mean, you've run into a few orcs. Um, he's a very tall gentleman. Uh, you know that half orcs are usually more people height, and this guy is a behemoth. So you can't really... Uh, figure out if he's full orc, half orc, or what he is. You just know he's got green in him. Gotcha. All right, well, Thok, uh, pleasure to meet you. Um, if any of these other, other orcs in here tell you that I suck, uh, the bullshit, uh, so just remember that. And um, uh, Dude, whatever you do at your own personal time, that's up to you. Like, I don't need to know, like, what you suck, who you... What, uh, did, I'm, I'm, I'm sure no, no one will they, tell me any they're of this. Mad cause, they're mad because they started a fight and, you know, we almost all killed them. Uh, it's not my fault that their bloodline's weak, but that's their fault. Um, <laughs> all I'm is saying... That, is that is, how the fight started? <laughs> well, Dying no, older. the fight started because they tried to break out and then my cellmate tried to kill all of them uh, with a cleaver. Uh, you'll meet him. He's a great guy, Burkhart. Um, but now now I'm, I'm bunking with Dremel here. Um, hey, you know, but... <laughs> I, I would like to say you haven't seen Burkhard since the incident. <laughs> well, he'll be back, you know. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you just keep telling yourself that, man. How long ago was this incident? Uh, I would say the incident has been about a month and a half ago. All right. And he's been gone that long? <laughs> yeah, he got, he got sent to solitary, all right? like right? We're solitary. But... Has, any, has anyone here, any of you two, been sent there? I've never been there. I don't know if I've ever seen anyone come back from solitary. Uh, you go to but, a farm. Oh, and I, yeah. I put earmuffs on Alder, but don't tell him that. <laughs> Got it. I won't. You no, know, my ears are pretty big. I still heard you. Yeah, I know. <laughs> So you kind of have this decision where every middle schooler has at a lunch table where you kind of like are or looking sit with them. <laughs> if you sit with the orcs or do you sit with the weirdos or, you know, do I want to get on the orcs good side so they leave me alone and not shiv me while I'm sleeping? Or these guys seem pretty rad. You're kind of like at that standstill. These, I'll go with la- the latter of the two. These guys seem, they, they, they have no ill will against me and they... Or talk with me, so I would just be the nice guy and just hang out with them. I've never been really close to orcs anyway, so. Fair. Um, so except you kind sharp. Of, except sharp. Um, so you kind of make your way over to the left and you kind of hear the orcs start murmuring. Uh, and these tables are kind of like mashed together. Uh, Alder eventually finds his way at his side of the table, which is usually across from <clears throat> Dremel. And you see the the thin man, he's at a very, the far end of the table because, you know, Donner kind of takes up a good chunk of the bench and he just kind of like sits there with his eyes covered and uh, you kind of find a seat across from Donner as you kind of put your mud bowl down uh, and you kind of see Donner like, <laughs> like eating, like this is his last meal. I'll stop and look up at him. Kind of like with my hands still covered in slop. Mm -hmm. I'll put the slop down in the bowl. Kind of like wipe my mouth. Look. I. I don't want any trouble. But this isn't a fight you want right now, mate. This is to me? Yeah. (laughs) Did I encourage a fight? All I did was walk up. Oh, you're an orc, so I kind of assume. Yeah, and you're a human, so 
Congratulations. No, we know each other's races. I mean, last orc that was this close to me tried to stab me in the neck, so. That's great. And if you don't piss me off, then now. I won't be stabbing you in the neck. Oh, mm. now you got that face. <laughs> <laughs> And you hear Arclight, he's like, he's making a face. Not a good one. We're fine. Was Am I the last orc that stabbed you? No? Okay, then. Not all orcs are the same. You're new. I don't know you. I don't know you. Being defensive. And I'll just keep eating my slop. Purposely, I'm going to sit across from him. <laughs> okay. I'm going to keep eating my slop, but stare at him. <laughs> in, uh, in, move. in Elvish, I want to say to Alder, so uh, who do you got on this fight? <laughs> I was going to say, am I still in the kitchen or am I over by the no, table? You're, sit- you're sitting at your, at your seat, which is you and uh, Dremel across from each other. <sighs> I'm going to be like, I really don't know, man. This, this, this thought guy seems a little bit wild, but... Donna literally punches people's faces in, so like, <laughs> hell if I know, man. I, it's uh, uh, we could we could. Do you think is there any money? Could we start taking bets? And uh, you, you hear uh, Arclight and Elvish go. I'll bet you two portions on the big guy. And he kind of him gesture at uh, Donner. I don't think he's the big guy. The other guy's bigger. <laughs> <laughs> How much bigger? Three inches. He's he's asking uh, uh, Alder. I, I mean, he's a, he looks a good deal bigger than me. I don't know. Open your eyes, Ock. Eh, I'm safe with my bet. <laughs> all right, all right. I mean, I'm I'm probably gonna. I'll be honest. I'll stick with Donna too. Uh, I just don't know what this this uh, this orc's kind of a wild card right now. It's the first time we've had an orc in here that actually fucking likes us. What the fuck are you guys talking about? Sports. Sports. Elvish Minor sports. details. Yeah, it's kind of rude. Like, you know, just randomly talking, like, another language. I agree with this guy. Just we made saying. you friends. Uh, let's not get carried away, mate. And then I'll hop back into Elvish and be like, well, bets are off. <laughs> Maybe next time. I'd barely call you my friends. <laughs> yeah. Under we'll my breath and go ahead, go ahead. Under my breath, an orchestra is gonna be like, what a dick. Uh roll a perception check. Who? 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 Uh fuck. Perception. Plus a thousand. <laughs> <laughs> I mean I didn't roll great, but I have a hell of a modifier. Eighteen. Uh you kind of as you say that under your breath, you see Arclight smirk, and you hear him scoff. Okay. I don't react to it. Uh, so, looking around, how mm-hmm. many dirty looks are we getting from the other orcs? All of them. <laughs> You're getting a lot. Uh, Kogan is not making eye contact. You kind of see them like looking back at Kogan, and Kogan... Very calmly, talking under his breath. And uh, Arclight kind of says at a, a more moderate tone, it sounds like they don't like you. They've they don't like who? Pl- they've got plenty of reason not to. And he kind of puts his hand on, on uh, Donner's forearm. I wasn't talking to you. Probably the blood traitor, they keep saying. <laughs> Good. What's a what do you mean by a blood trader? <sighs> a blood trader is one that is not a full orc. It is a derogatory term for anyone that is a mixed breed. That explains why you don't fucking hate us like everybody else. I just maybe I do like this guy. <laughs> Do we need to go beat him up again? I mean, oh, is this is this you fought last time, Kogan? 
I fought a few to get there, but he definitely knows who I am. So what about this Kogan? Who who is he? Is he the like leader of the pack? Like every jail has one. He tries. Okay. Yeah, the the reason that we're locked down so heavily and you and I specifically are wearing these lovely little necklaces that make it so we can't do any fucking magic um, is because of the fact that uh, Kogan tried to break out. Burkhart, who I talked about earlier, tried to slice people up. And then when Burkhart was... They tried to pick a fight with us after he threw them back in here. We had to try and detain them. And that's when Oz came back. Like, he was real real mad about it but like he got it but like i don't know i just want to just miss my magic i miss aya i miss my magic i want to get out of here look the magic doesn't define you you're its master you you you'll be fine without the magic no nah, you <laughs> apparently not i haven't no i haven't seen anything of, uh, aside from an orc green in approximately eight months right now and you have no idea how much that's killing me <laughs> I well. told you to start meditating <laughs> just visualize the green man you know uh, I've heard you talk about a mind's eye quite a few times and can yeah. I tell you I've actually seen multiple. multiple mind's eyes. eyes. Multiple minds with eyes. But it's, it's not a thing. I, All right. Are you having uh, nightmares again? Being in this place is a nightmare. Amen. Nightmares. You have nightmares? Well, I'm, I mean, eyes on mine sounds scary. <laughs> uh, I wouldn't say nightmares. I would say I relive past events. I know the feeling. More than you know. And I'm going to stick my slap hand out and reach out to shake Thok's hand. Don't and you kind of spray uh, Thok all over with this slop, and it kind of goes over to, like, Arclight has some on him, like, Dremel and Alder get smacked a little bit with the slop. Thanks. Uh, and I reach out reluctantly, but shake the slop hand. And you feel these calloused hands kind of... Uh, you both have very fairly big hands. Thok's a little bit bigger, but... You kind of feel this strength and this firm grip from it as you shake it once or twice. Donna. Fuck. This is my bunkmate, Arclight. Name's Arl. Arclight's the last name. He's Arclight. That's so much Arl. So... Fuck. Mm. What brought you into our merry mountain? <sighs> you know, people not willing to take the money that I'm going to pay them when they say that I have a bounty on my head, apparently. But... Did you try to bribe a judge? I didn't try to bribe a judge. They said I owed money and I gave them what I had. He tried to bribe a judge. Did, but you yeah. failed. <laughs> <laughs> Failed. Yes, yes, I failed. But they they say piracy. I don't call it piracy. Oh, so what do you call it? I call it taking away from the corrupt and give it to the rightful people that it belongs to. Mm. T-W-A-G, blah, blah. Yeah, sure. Acronyms here and there. <laughs> oh, no. Paying it forward. So do you decide who it goes to? Do you have a council? Like, a how do you council? know? How do you decide who's uh, who deserves it? Those that look like they're in need and those that my God tells me to give it to, I give. 
Oh, it's a god. Is, okay, you could have just said god. Who is your god? Unfortunately, can't see him here, but Pelor. I've heard, I've heard of him before. He's pretty major. I hope you have. Good yeah, guy. No, no problems with Pelor here. He's a good guy. Yeah, he's great. Yeah. I don't know if he's great, but he'll do. Oh, he's pretty great. He brought me back once or twice. Anyways, oh, and, and I just started eating my slob. Wait, once or twice? I feel like you remember if it's once or twice. <laughs> it's a long it's a history out of school. speech. <laughs> yes, yeah. Figure out his speech. Sure, yeah. That. Roll a deception check. Oh, it's caught. <laughs> that's not great. What did I say? It was a plus zero? Yeah. Yeah, that's an eight. Okay. Um, if you all would like to roll against the eight. Perception? Investigation? Uh, insight. I would say insight. Sorry. Ah, no, 11. Damn. Cocked. Eight. 27. Fuck <laughs> oh, <God>, you. <laughs> He sees my soul. <laughs> <laughs> Tremel? Eight. So you kind of, Alder, you kind of pick up on this, you know, uncomfortableness and uneasiness that comes to Doc when he talks about this. Eh, we don't have to get into it too much. I think I know where you're coming from. Um, you want to get out of here too? I do. Who's my bunkmate? Your bunkmate? Yeah, it was one of the orcs at the other table. Oh, great. <laughs> cool. This is going to be fun. Well, I mean, if uh, he gives you any trouble, just let us know. Hey, sure. uh, Alder. What? You'll kill him. <laughs> You'll kill yeah. him. The uh, that big pot and the the ladle you you use to give us the slop, what's that made yeah. out of? I mean, I'm not fond of it, but uh... I would say it's made out of like a kind of metal alloy, like a like uh, equivalent of a aluminum or cast. No, I would say cast iron, something right. a little heavier. Yeah. You think you could uh, get that ladle for Thok, just in case, you know. They've been giving us that death stare for the past 30 minutes. What yeah. am I going to do with a spoon? Hey, if uh, they come out... It's a pretty fucking heavy spoon. <laughs> yeah, look at his right arm. Crap. Man, that look at his right arm. spoon is too big. <laughs> I'm just saying, oh. it's better for you to have something to defend yourself with if uh, they start to do some funny business. I don't think okay. we can fit through the bars. The half, the half work with a killer spoon. Got it. <laughs> It's a killer ladle, if we're being specific. Sorry, ladle. But Maybe we should ease up on saying kill a lot. <laughs> oh, we're just joking. Isn't no one kills been? anyone here. We're in jail. We're under supervision. We'll be fine. Uh, not true. I've killed at least three people. It's <laughs> <laughs> the worst that could happen. Murder. Did you not oh, hear that's... me say I've killed at least three people here? No, we've heard you. Okay. Ark. What? What's the plan? I know you're working on something over there. You're too quiet. Well, you know, wandering in the side of a mountain blind for five months has been really super. Um, but we got to figure something out. They've, they've definitely upped the security since the last time when I broke out. So you broke out? Yeah, I was very close. Almost made it. If you would have told some of us, we could have helped. Well, you all weren't here yet. I was. You were here for a week, and you didn't say anything. Fair. <laughs> it's true. It does, it does usually take you a little bit of time to warm up to people. <clears throat> Sorry, Thok. Well, so this is normal. <laughs> Yeah. 
They're fine. I mean, I'm not planning on staying here long. So if you attempt another time, you at least have someone with orcish blood on your side. Well, that's more than I usually have. The fact of the matter is we have to figure out what the new guard schedule is because I've been trying to track it for about a month and I can't figure it out because they're so sporadic. We have at least a handful of shield guardians now, not to mention the other half of that room wanting to kill every single last one of us, new company included. Not to mention Oz is a little bit crazy. And uh, Mm. don't forget these fashionable necklaces we have. That too. Is there a guard around right now? Um, I would say that there's one like present, but you're not. He's not talking in like a like a moderate tone where it's super loud, and unless someone's like kind of really close to the table. Uh, can I like look at Alder's fancy neck bangle? God, you beat me to it. I was going to do sure. the exact same thing. I mean, you should probably do it too, because no. this isn't going to go well. But I'm, sh- I'm sure your investigation is better than mine. <laughs> Barely. Uh, okay, so investigation. Mm-hmm. Six. <laughs> it's there. <laughs> it, it looks like a glowing maze on his on that wraps around the collar. Do I like see the stone? There's, like, you can see the, you don't see, like, a stone in there. You just see that the, the maze can, is glowing with each line of it. Okay. And then the negative space is this um, metal stone kind of ore. Do I notice anything? It's a six, so probably not. But do I notice anything that looks like if I tried to pry it off of his neck, it would hurt him? You don't see a seal to do that. To like pull it, right? Like okay. it's a solid. It's a solid. It's, it's, like there's no seam. How the fuck did they get this on you? I I'm gonna scratch. I'm assuming I'm wearing one too. Yeah. I'm gonna pretend to scratch myself, but in actuality, I'm trying to gauge like how thick is it. Like, and, like if I can put my finger under it, like if it's like you, attached you have to very my thick. Skin. You have I very do, thick fingers. So you, you have, have sausage enough, fingers. I do. You have enough space to where you can breathe and swallow mildly comfortably. It's slightly irritated, but <clears throat> it's not to the extent of like you can slide a whole hand and just kind of like deglove your face or something in that regard. But it's not like attached like, to my skin. Like there's like if I got something thin enough, it would slide in. You could technically wedge, yes. Okay. Good to know. These are fun. I mean, I could try and rip it off your head, but... I mean, if that was directed at me, I'd like to maybe try something a bit more gentle. Um, just He's going to rip your game. head off. Let's uh, I'm sure sure it's kill a bit four. more gentle. <laughs> I'm sure no one's tried that before. I mean, what? how smart do you think these orcs are? Come on. That's like that's what I mean. Like I'm actually gonna say that kind of loud. I'm gonna say that one kind of loud. I'm gonna be like, "How smart do you think these orcs are?" And you hear like, (laughs) (laughs) and you kind of hear them like they're they're clamoring, getting a little bit louder. And you see Ivan. He's like, "All right, all right, guys, like settle, settle. Don't want to get Oz out here." Oz. Oh. Oz, my best friend. Uh, oh, you know him? Balls. I know of him. Is he going to help yeah, us get we... out? <laughs> <laughs> He's your best friend, right? Okay. Yeah, we all get the Oz best friend spiel on the way in. He's, I mean, realistically, he's not a bad guy. You just, you know, he's just trying to do his job, but <sighs> he's got an iron fist lately. It's a pain in the ass. Nah, that fucker's getting a little hungry with power. Yeah, sometimes the worst things come from men just doing their jobs. Look, I I agree. 
fuck. But most of these gods are just trying to put food on the table. So if we are going to attempt to have a field trip, I don't want to kill anyone. Incapacitate? Fine. But I'm not cool with harming innocent men. Nope. Fair enough. Like I I'm I'm not one to kill unless it's a last resort. It's only a self defense thing. Yeah, I know that all too well, but I agree. Yeah, and we'll if see. we get this thing off my neck, I can prevent them from dying. And uh, you hear Arc Light, and he kind of like brushes his hair, and then talk. If you want to make a uh, perception check, as he kind of brushes his hair out of his eyes very briefly. Twenty six. Twenty six. You see, um, as his eyes kind of peer out, you kind of see this milky film over them. And as he kind of lifts, and you see his tuft of hair go up because you rolled so high, I'll give it to you. You see this very tiny point. That kind of comes out of his skull as the hair kind of goes back on. No, I think killing is, uh, yeah, these guys are just doing their job. It's the system that's corrupt. It's not them. Well, maybe Oz. Uh, do you know where they're keeping our things? Did you pass a hallway or I have a, I have a, very important artifact I need to retrieve if we're going to leave this place. Well, I mean, I can smell you, so I can probably figure out where the locker is. Yo, welcome. Thanks. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I think we all have quite a few things we'd like to try and get out of here with us if we can. I mean, I know Agreed. that I got... Yeah. Not only do I have my equipment, but they're holding Aya captive too, so I need to try and get her. Aya? Who? A fa- you, your wife? No, uh, sh- she's my hawk. I'm sorry, oh, what? It's a bird. Well, yeah. <laughs> I guess we yeah, just no, a sh- bird. How long are you sentenced for? They're just going to watch your bird this whole entire time? I mean, they took her here. I don't know. Is she in we might a, have uh, already solitary? had her for dinner one night. Uh, when's the last time you had meat? Fair. A <laughs> few months oh, ago. I was going to say, Oz still lets me see her every once in a while. I know she's alive. I just need to get her out of here. Well, uh, how about getting that ladle? I mean... It's not a problem. We got multiple. Yes, killer ladle. Coming killer ladle right up. And maybe a some sort of lock pick. Can't I mean, find... I'll see what I could I, see I, what I could do in regards to that. I mean, I don't know how much. I'm I'm pretty good with a lock pick myself, but I don't know if I have anything small enough to back there that we could use to actually get through get through something. I'm just saying, if we have some sort of metal, it puts us at an advantage. So, the more ladders we can have, the better. Always metal. Ark, you are the only one among us who's been close to getting out of here. Mm. What do we need? What do we have to do? I'll be, I'll be right back. Sorry. No problem. Well, first considering that last time I didn't go on the detour. We got to figure out a big distraction. We got to get the guards. We got to get the shield guardians. We got to get them focused on something. Now, when I went, I just kind of beelined, but I mean, I'm going to assume the lockers by the uh, uh, guard quarters. And that's going to be uncomfortable. It's probably a safe bet. And then that's getting past the uh, shield guardians and then getting to out of this prison and into the system 
That's what I did. I was in this uh, the cave system. And then it's navigating the cave system in the dark by yourself to try to get to the top of the summit of a mountain. It took me five months going blind. I might be able to streamline it. I was counting the steps over when we were they were bringing me back. It beat the shit out of me. At least Oz did, but I think I have a pretty good direction. Well, uh, uh, this time you won't be alone. I think it'll be a lot easier to navigate. Uh, what? What brought you in here? And you kind of see him smirk. And uh, he kind of clenches his fist, and you hear like all the cartilage in his bone just, uh, in his hand, just kind of pop and churn as this gas is kind of released from his joints. And uh, he kind of relaxes again. I, um, uh, where I'm from, there were uh, a lot of people getting hurt, and uh, a lot of injustice and. A lot of uh, no hope. So I uh, took it upon myself to uh, alleviate some of those wrongs, similar to our friend here. I didn't. I don't kill. I I didn't kill or, but I maimed. I made sure that I made a message. And one night you get bum rushed. They take off your mask. <clears throat> They put you in Stone Ward. Sounds uh, sounds a bit similar, almost too similar. You know, I'm kind of getting the vibe that all of us are here for actually doing something good, but people thinking it's bad. It's all perspective. I mean, I'm not proud of what happened with me because there is blood on my hands, but I was just trying to. It's a village, Vestigod. It's a place called the Dragon Stables. They were doing this weird experimentation. They were trying to make horses stronger, and they had this wizard who was basically trying to mutate them to make them stronger, make them better. And they were it was just putting them in so much pain, agony. I went in to go try and uh, free them from the, the capture, free them from the pain. And the wizard, uh, Oneron, is his name, he caught on, and uh, that was about the last thing he caught. So, didn't want it to be that way, but I couldn't stand seeing it like that. And you kind of see Alder's hands, they're clenched, like you see the white of his knuckles as he finishes his story, and his hands kind of relax. Sometimes we gotta do what we have to do, what we think is right. Yeah. Ain't that the truth? What right. about you, Ice Cream? Is that me? Yeah. Well, you're from a mountain, yeah. and you're kind of a cow. So, <laughs> do you- a little, a little blue. I mean, Ice Cream. <clears throat> Is you think that... uh, maybe I taste like ice cream and I put out my hand for him to lick? I will yeah. just stare at it. And then I caress his face. Ooh. <laughs> um, yeah, my my town was slaughtered. Um, oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, my, my brother... There was a man... Uh, in crimson, just red all over. He came and he uh, he killed them all. I, I I don't know how I was the only one he didn't kill, but I was, and uh, I stared into his his eyes. I almost said his soul, but to do what he did, you don't have a soul. And uh, as I 
as, as, as he ran away, I tried to clean up the wreckage that he caused, and that's when the guards came. Not just the guards, but the military. I don't know if he's been doing it all around, but they found me and assumed I did it. I mean, there was blood all over me, so I, I can't really blame them. But, uh, yeah, so I'm just here from a misunderstanding. So, wait, you, you legitimately didn't even do anything. You just had everyone you know murdered, and then you got arrested. You were wrongfully accused. Fucking hell. Yeah. Again. I mean, so. I, I wouldn't. It's not that I did nothing, but I, I didn't do that. Talk <sighs> about a corrupt system. What about you, Donner? What are you doing here? I deserve to be here. I'm a monster. Again, that's perspective. Why do you say that? I... I killed five men in cold blood because I think they went too far. Too but far? I've been a bit of a wanderer recently trying to find my way back home and it's kind of hard to do that when you're looking for the bottom of a cask of ale every night I got brought in by a very nice farming family and they let me stay in the shed for work and a couple pieces of copper that I promptly spent at the tavern. And uh, one night, a group of marauders came in and tried to take what little valuables this family had. And uh, the, the man tried to stop them he tried to save the valuables for his family you know father his wife five kids four girls one boy it's all they really had and uh i stopped them but not before they took care of him one got away. It was a boy. Fifteen. And if he didn't get away, I probably would have killed him too. I'm a monster. You're not a monster. Man, that sounds like you were defending people. Defense Some... doesn't make you a monster. Remember that. I could be this distraction. No. How so? I mean, I can put down quite a few orcs before they even get a chance to uh, get a lick back on me. So. Or. Huh. We can be the distraction. What do you mean? I've only known you for this lunch, dinner, whatever, meal period. Is there a son? I don't even know what the fuck time it is. I just know that I eat slop that Alda makes every fucking day. It's not that I don't try to get better food. Remember that. <laughs> if me and you end up fighting, that'll be a distraction. And when the time is right, we can get away. You think it'll cause 
that big of a distraction for them to escape. We gotta roll the orcs up though. Also There's more true. of them. There's more of them than there are of us. So bigger distraction. I mean, well, I mean, if legions can be made, and perhaps there could be some friction over the next couple of days between the two of you before an eventual but uh, inevitable betrayal, probably get the orcs to be riled up. Yeah, but how are we going to get you out if you're in the epicenter of this conflict? Like I said, I deserve to be here. I think you can do more good by being out there. I feel like you're meant for something else. I don't know why. I just... I think you're being a lot harder on yourself than you need to. I know from experience. You sound like my wife. <laughs> if your wife looked like me, I apologize a thousandfold. <laughs> she did not. Oh, she looked worse. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Got him. Fuck. Oh. Fuck. I've come to accept you, but that does not mean I will not kick the shit out of you. Oh, you Remember can try. That. I mean, that's the whole idea, right? You to kick the shit out of him so we can run? Yeah. Uh, can you get some of your orc buddies, you think, to come over to your side? Betray Kogan? Maybe uh, have a little army of your own? Your captain and all, quite famous. I could try, but as it is, the snickering about me being a, what was it, blood trader? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm sure that that will not end well. How about a show of strength? I mean, get them more food. How, How about they- a show of strength? It's worth a shot. Do you trust me? I hardly know you. I'm going to step up on the bench and punch Thok in the face. Oof. Okay. And with that, I think that'll be a good time to call it. (laughs) (laughs) You can't just punch somebody in the face and say, now we're done. (laughs) See ya. (laughs) Yes, I can. Uh, You can and you did. (laughs) We'll pick it up next week. Yeah. Uh, All right. Well, uh, guys. Thank you for tuning in to uh, Campaign 2, Episode 1. Uh, we don't have a name for this campaign yet. Uh, so <laughs> It'll just, come in time. Uh, it'll, it'll happen. Uh, yeah. Favorite, we're actually going to hang out for a little bit um, yeah. in, the, in the chat. At least I will. I'm going to hang out for a little bit. I have some. We're going to post this on YouTube on Thursday. So like our YouTube channel, uh, search The Junk Drawer Show. We're trying to get to 100 subs so that we can then be The Junk Drawer Show. So every every little bit helps. Um, yeah, yep. So, yeah, hang out with us in the chat for a little bit. But thank you guys so much for uh, for watching and being a part of this first episode. Uh, I'm super excited to see where it goes. We've all been waiting for what? many, many months oh, to uh, be able to do this. And uh, it, ends, it ends how in a very familiar way with one of my characters punching another character in the face. Of course. Hi, no. Re- real original, Pat. Real <laughs> original. I feel like hey, we at least deep in New York. At least this hole. time I have a plan. <laughs> yeah. We'll yeah. see how this plan goes. We'll Improvise. <laughs> yeah. I asked him if he trusted me, so we'll find out. <laughs> Um, but yeah, with that, guys, I think we're going to be back. Uh, we should be back 8 o'clock uh, next Eastern. Tuesday. 8 o'clock Eastern. 8, eight o'clock Eastern, Eastern next yeah. Tuesday. Yeah. And yeah. otherwise, we love you all and goodbye. <laughs>